The Jack Basil Memorial Fund auction has begun on Board Game Geek just two days ago. And uh, Battling Brushes actually has two entries in that. First of all, we have the entry for Imperial Assault, which is the game we have been painting and will paint for this episode and the next episode. The winning bidder of that second entry is going to be able to pick the game that we paint and then after we paint it, we'll play it and then ship it to you for free worldwide. So go on to Jack Vazel Memorial Fund Auction at Board Game Geek. Thank you, Board Game Geek, for hosting that, by the way. And see what you can do. Maybe it's a little bit too pricey for you, but at least you can check out the other auctions and see how it's going. And remember, people, this is for a very good charity, uh, Jack Vazel Memorial Fund, helping out gamers in distress a lot but for this episode let's get to the painting shall we and as we begin we're just going to get the uh base um filled nice and good fist and red is a good color for it so um we're really just kind of trying to work this into everything i'm not doing the uh staff uh, until last as you're going try to follow the curves of the robes that will help a little bit in um, trying to make sure it's a nice even coat. Make sure you're getting the underneath as well so that later on you won't have to worry about it so much. This is the base coat. It's the darkest color of the reds that we're going to be doing so um, that'll give a good shadow effect underneath that as well. And as always try to do you know nice even thin coats um, so that you can come back and, and wear, especially with red, red has a, a pretty difficult time covering. So you're going to have to do multiple coats. But uh, after that's done, then you're going to take some um, Careborn Crimson and uh, give it a good wash. That's the wash. Now we have to let that dry, and we'll come back in a few little, in a little bit. And while we're waiting for that wash to dry on the Imperial Red Guard, I thought I would go ahead and get started uh, with the ATST. Now I don't want to get all of the crevices here. I, uh, I want that black to give that shadow effect, um, and then we're just going to go over this with that gray and a very light. Uh, dry brush because we we want shadows we want things to pop where they should be popping and so forth and so on so You can be as light or as heavy handed with this as you want. Again, you're wanting to uh, capture the effect of a little bit of wear and tear and, and uh, using, uh, be, you know, it being used and that type of thing. But again, this is also a uh, base coat of sorts. We're gonna be going over this with another dry brush show. You're, you're okay with being a little heavy handed in some spots and not as heavy handed in others. So what this is really trying to do is, is give a little bit of a pop for some of those other things that uh, you're definitely not gonna see normally um, and then go from there. And now I'm giving a, uh, an, another uh, kind of moderated uh, dry brush of Dawn Star, Dawnstone, uh, which is a lighter gray and uh, we want to be a little bit more careful 
with this one because while we are wanting to uh, we are wanting to cover with this we aren't wanting to cover everything we're just trying to uh, lighten it up a little bit and uh, give it some character at the same time Okay, and now we're going to come back to our Imperial uh, Red Guard, and you can see that the wash has dried completely, so now we're ready to uh, hit that dry brushing stage I was telling you about earlier. So for the dry brush, the first coat is going to be with this uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, it's a lighter shade red. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is use a white because you'll have a pink Red Guard instead of a red Red Guard. Um, so um, be careful with that, okay? Uh, try to use red base colors on these guys because um, you might have some strange effects if you do not. And then we're just going to uh, kind of go sideways on it because we really just want to catch those raised surfaces. So as you can see, it's it's pulling out some of those uh, details uh, and and putting a little bit of highlight on those raised edges. A little bit of paint, and then pull it out again. Again, you want to use want to get most of it out, so you're not putting too much. And now we're going to come back and do another coat, another dry brush coat of. Uh, uh, wild Rider, <laughs> that's such a hard thing to say, Wild Rider Red. All right, so you get a little paint on your brush, you wipe most of it out, and then you just kind of, it's the same, the same technique as we did with that first coat, but this is going to be a lighter color, so it should uh, make those parts of the miniature pop a little bit more. Okay, so again, you're kind of going against the grain here, unlike the base coat. The base coat, we kind of went with the folds of the robe, and now we're going against them because we only want to hit that top part of, of the robes that are, that are kind of protruding out. Now we're going to take the uh, lead belcher on the actual gun parts here and uh, just give them a good uh, swap through because we do want them to uh, look like metal, of course. Uh, so we're just, we don't want to use too much, uh, especially don't want to get too much paint down into those recesses because we don't want it to uh, pool up or anything like that. So do be careful about how much paint you're putting on uh, your brush for this part. Now, another thing I just wanted to show you because I just kind of stumbled across, uh, upon, uh, upon this, I was uh, finishing up the uh, guns with the lead belcher, and so I had just a little bit of paint left in my brush. Started going over uh, some of the raised edges, and if you can see that there, it gave a little, nice little metallic sheen to that gray. So now, that's what I'm doing. I'm cut, and, and I just kind of stumbled across that uh, you see there on the back where it just really kind of highlighted, made everything look metal instead of just uh, a gray color.
So those are my Imperials. I think they're coming along pretty well. I might have a little bit of a biased opinion there, but uh, let's go check out Rob on the loser side, see how he's doing. Great job there, Sam. You're doing a great job. And what we're doing, I think, is really a great thing by doing this every single month and having fun at it for the Jack Fassel Memorial Foundation. With that said, hey, let's get to the table and see what I'm up to this week. To use a retributing armor on C-3PO. So, we're going to shake up our paint real good. And you're going to see the result I'm going to get because it's going to be pretty much dead on. So we're just going to get it on and we're going to spread it on there really, really good and we're going to cover his entire body. So right now, there you go. We just covered C-3PO with a, a brassy gold a, or a retribution armor. Okay, now that we got him all gold up and everything like that, you think, oh wow, that was easy, we're all done. But we are not done. Because the next stage is to add Reichland Flesh Shade. That just by adding this, this wash, you're starting to get some of the detail. And I always talk about that. See how on the back here, yeah, it looks pretty good, but... You know, and you could play with that. You could just put gold on it and walk away from it. But by adding a flesh shade, it adds another dimension. So we add a flesh wash, and as you can see, now all the detail of C-3PO is coming through really, really crystal clear. And once that dries, we'll move on to the next step. Is after the wash, we're going to take pure gold from Folk Art. I've already got it here and mixed up and ready to go. And I'm going to get a little on my brush here. Nice and easy. And then we're going to take, and you see his chest right here? All we're going to do is just in that flat spot, just, and on that side, take it. Now look what that does. You see how that puts that shadow and leaves, the, leaves everything looking really, really good in the recesses? Right in there. Bring out the chest. Bring out the arm sockets here. His fingers, his hands. On his back, you can see how his plate has come as alive, the back of his head. And there you go. That's uh, C-3PO. After we do the highlights on the chest on the thighs and on the arms he's all set now next is going to be R2-D2 but because the detail isn't exactly as we as I hoped it was and it's pretty good it's just there's some things that are missing so what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint his entire head and again this is starting on the outside and we're just going to get it a, a good dark gunmetal silver okay so the top of his head's dried so now we're going to take some true blue and we're going to apply it into little slots now there we go and you just kinda see how you fill that in Just gonna work your way in the middle and then work your way to the sides. Come across from the middle. Alright, now that he's dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and put a new oil over our two. And then once this dries, we'll come back and start working on him even further. Make sure you get every spot and move it around real good and get in all those recesses. Now that the wash is dry, what we usually do is take a little sterling silver or rune fang steel and just basically, I want to make sure I get this in camera range, here we go, and just start bringing out 
the silver again to just highlight it and get it to come and bring back life to that. Like so, all of a sudden it starts coming back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to finish off by putting some blue in there and get that right and then of course take care of his eye holes. Okay, so um, pretty much let's just take a quick look here where we're at. I got C3PO done and R2D2 is done. The only problem is is there is a defect right here and you can't see it because I'm not going to show it to you but there's actually a physical defect where it looked like a, there's a bad molding in here so I may try to go out and buy another one and repaint it but I think you guys get the gist of what I was trying to tell you by um, going over with the wash then the silver and then basically washing it again and then going over the blue but there's flat spots here okay and as you can see uh, I've already pre-painted just the bases base colors with no highlights and the reason for that is is because this is the hard part of this okay and I want to show this to you because I believe you guys can do this and the trick is is to get the washes that we're going to use for the skin to make him more look like the way he's supposed to look his pants his jacket and over the um, backpacks and um, grenades and stuff like that we want to get those washes in there and into uh, his t-shirt which is underneath but we don't want them to mix into each other because that that will cause nothing but problems I mean you don't want green wash on tan and you don't want brown wash on green or blue wash onto his t-shirt or the tan areas so I'm gonna show you how to do this and uh, let's get going on it and let's get this guy all finished up so the first shade that we're going to use is a Drakenhof nightshade and I'm going to go and I'm going to start in the middle of his hand and work this shade around and bring it around and work it and work it making sure it's almost like painting it in there because we really don't want it to bleed over too much and as you can see I'm doing all right here and that's how these things are gonna come so okay so we've got that wash in there real good we got it into his face real well next we're gonna go with the Agrath earth shade another butchered name why can't they just say brown earth shade we're gonna come to a higher point and we are going to move this down now the other thing that you got to remember about these washes is that they they always drip down that you get it into the cre into the recesses but they're going to find a way to work themselves they always work like with gravity and they go downward and as you can see we're starting to have that jacket come to life a bit now this stuff Athonian camo shade so and all we're doing is we're just taking a bit of it and just working it into the areas into the creases of his legs making sure we got enough and it's okay if this drips down onto the black as you can see you could do that it's not going to change anything and the creases in his pants and that's exactly what we're looking to do here for our saboteur uh, we did I did Mac earlier uh, I'm just gonna explain a, a couple more things what we did with them um, for his skin um, I took an egg white and painted all his skin the egg white and then after that I watered down the Agrath earth shade um, by taking one part of the wash and worked it on the table over here and just took a, a, a drop of water and, and thinned it out a little bit and then went over the skin and that's how I've got that that um, lighter lighter skin contrast on him then just a um, slate gray for the hair uh, which uh, will be dry brushed with a um, oh, excuse me a gray storm 
uh, Americana, which would be a Mechanicus Gray. And then um, what I'm going to do is dry brush that in a few minutes with a slate gray very, very easily. And uh, there you go. There's Max. Okay, and now for some of the final things that we want to do here. We just want to bring that box alive. So I'm going to put a little lime green in here. His little wrist thing. So there you have it. You got Mac, C3PO, R2D2, all done. Hey, where, where's the set? Where's the saboteur? Where, where are you guys going? Where are you guys going? In such a heart. Oh no. Oh come on. Sam's Walker, he just built that. Why would you guys do something like that? Oh. I mean, that's just wrong. He worked so hard on that thing. And you blew it up. That's it. No clear coat for you guys, and I'm not going to do your bases. You guys are in big trouble. I can't believe you guys. Why would you do that to Sam's thing? He worked so hard. <sighs> Sorry, Sam. I can't control them. I don't know. Maybe you can have some encouragement on them, because I have no control over what they do. I'm really sorry about your walker. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I was wondering where my ATST went. Thanks a lot, Rob. Why don't you keep control of your little rebel band a little bit better, huh? So that's it for Battling Brushes this week. Thanks for joining us again. Join us again next week for our next episode where I will be painting the Imperial Officers and the E-Web Blasters. And then Rob's going to be painting the uh, Rebel General Rebel characters and Han Solo. So see you on the flip side, folks. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.